Hey guys, Charlie here. Welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program. As you can see, we have 0.8 science remaining in our little uh, cache here. And that's because I've uh, done a little bit more science around the KSC and I've managed to get enough to unlock automation. Now there's a bug with the R&D. I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, this is still version 1.1.2. I have not went to 1.1.3 because all hell breaks loose when I go to that version. Um, I just gotta wait. I got tons of mods, so I just gotta wait until those mods kind of populate themselves. I mean, I lose, I, I just, everything goes to shit. Anyway, um, I, I went ahead and I got automation and ignore the fact that there's a ton of parts here. There's not really that many parts, but the reason why I got automation I don't know why it's in automation, actually. K and K algae farm. Uh, this is what I need to produce organics and grow food, and uh, it takes waste, and ore, and electric charge, and produces organics. It'll also produce carbon dioxide, but that's fine. I can I can convert. It's a very small amount of carbon dioxide, and I can convert that to. Uh, well, it's actually not that small. 18 per hour, not per day. Okay. Anyway, I can convert that carbon dioxide to oxygen fairly quick, fairly easily. So I'm not really concerned about that, or at least extract it out and dispel the carbon. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do. So today, what we're doing in this video is we're going to kind of design, and I am going to skip through it. I don't have enough time to like, it's going to be a ridiculously long video if I walked you guys through the entire process. Basically, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be packaging up our base. I did get some feedback from you guys. Um, decent feedback, not something that really is going to help enough to like alter how my base plan is. It seems like people are, I guess, fairly accepting of it for the most part anyway. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's go to the space plane hangar. Okay, so we're in the space plane hangar and uh, try to excuse if there's any like glitching or any skipping in the audio or the video. I apologize for that. Uh, I'm looking at my task manager here on my other monitor and KSP is currently using 11 gigabytes of uh, memory. So I, I have a feeling once it gets over like nine, usually I start seeing, I start seeing problems with performance. So the fact that it's at 11, yeah, see these guys, they, they glitch and stop every now and then it's, I don't know what to do. All right, anyway, so let's talk about how we're gonna package this thing, this stuff up. Um, I wanna launch pretty much everything in one big launch. The only thing I'm not gonna be launching is the central hub and the remote guidance unit because I don't have the remote guidance unit. Um, I'm also, I, I know this is going to maybe disappoint some people and I'm sorry about that, but we're not gonna be sending Kerbals to Duna this round. We're gonna be doing it the next time we come around. Um, the reason for that is simply because I'm not ready to start laying the bases down on the ground yet. And because of that, there's no real reason to have Kerbals on the mission. I can send everything except the central part of my base. Um, and I'm pretty, I'm being, I'm being stubborn about it. I want that remote guidance unit on that central hub. So, but I do have a consolation prize, which I think you guys will enjoy. And you may enjoy it more um, because I think a lot of people could, are, are going to do what I'll be doing instead the next few episodes. I think people are more likely to enjoy that part, maybe, than they are the ground base. I don't know. Ground bases are the core of this video series, but, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in later. Anyway, so how are we going to do this? We're going to probably need something structural. Um, actually, you know what? This 10 meter truss looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I can work with that. Uh, actually, let's move this up a little bit and... I'm gonna move it up a little bit too. Uh, actually, let's do, let's get another one of these. Let's get two of these. And uh, do I need, is two of these enough? You know what? We're gonna do three. And if I don't need three, then I'll just get rid of three. But I, I think three is probably the good number here. Okay. So how we're gonna do this is I'm thinking I'm gonna have the bases sort of like on the sides, mounted to the side of this rail. So like on this side and this side, we'll have the bases mounted to this rail. And um, I think then on the top, we'll have maybe fuel tanks, solar panels, um, RCS, stuff like that to help control it. Uh, on the front, we'll probably have the 10 meter heat shield. Um, just, I don't know if I need it, but if I do, then I'd like to just know I have it. So I'll probably put that on the top on the front here. And then, um, 
On the back, we'll probably need to do something for, for an engine. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of Delta V in that stage. It's mostly just to help us with descent. This will be a, sort of like this huge thing will be descent. And then I need to figure out how I'm going to get all of that together onto a craft that's capable of launching it to space and getting it out to Duna. If I have to refuel it, then so be it. But I at least need to get it to orbit around Kerbins from that point. So uh, let's do, I, I need to attach it to the sides. And I don't think I want to do decouplers, um, at least not radial mounted ones, because then they leave, they leave a little bit on the part itself, and I don't know if they'll lay flat then. I, I'm going to try and do the base without the legs, uh, which, need, which does mean I'm going to need a fairly flat place, but um, we'll see how that works out. I'm not sure how that will work out, but we're, we'll see. Um, let's see. I know there's like a, there's got to be a flat area around Duna that's that big. There's just, there's just got to be, and I'll find it. Um, okay, so, and maybe I'll regret that decision and this will be a waste, a huge waste of money. I don't know. It'll probably cost us like half a million dollars to send this up. Let's do, uh, I need to mount this. How do I want to do this? These radial decouplers always leave bits. Um, actually, radial attachment points. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay. Hey, I think I can work with this. Um, let's go ahead and put, um, maybe we'll, we'll mount it like, maybe like this. Oh, how do I, oh, oh, camera, camera, there we go. Yeah, okay, we'll mount it like this, that's, that's pretty good. Um, then we'll take, okay, I, I think I got this, I think I got this. We're gonna take a decoupler, we're gonna use these stack ones. And we'll just kind of pop them on like that. Okay. Is that the right way? These are decouplers. I want the decouplers to say it stay attached to this. I don't want them to stay attached to the the base unit. And I would use separators, but I don't want space junk. Well, they're not gonna be space junk, actually. They'll be hmm. I think these are the right way though. These just by the looks of this, I think that's the right direction. Because when I decouple this on other ships before, I, I would see it, it looks like this. So I'll let it go. Okay, so we'll have it like that. And then the base will come, let's see, planetary base systems. Let's try, I don't want symmetry mode. Because I'm probably going to have different things on each side. There's the algae farm. There's my central hub I can't bring. Not yet, anyway. I, I, not yet. I'm stubborn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to that plan. Uh, let's do Habitat Mark II. Okay, Habitat Mark II, and then we'll just kind of flip it over and pop it on like that. Okay, yeah, I like that. Then we can duplicate that and bring it over here like that. Okay, yeah, I'm liking that. Uh, let's try the, let's actually do the laboratory on this side. Let's kind of do like something like this. Yep. Okay, yeah, I'm liking this. It's coming together. Uh, I'm gonna need something on this side, but let's. I'll, I'll worry about their attachments and like which side to put them on. We are gonna need the docking ports. We do have the docking ports available now, so let's go ahead and pop those on. Oh, yeah. They just look so fluid. Like, they look like they're meant to be because they, you know, they sort of are meant to be. Uh, I can put them on both sides. Just have to make sure they're facing the right direction. There we go. There we go. Okay, it's coming together. Uh, now for the next bit, I'll do the radial attachment point again. So let's just, uh, oh, that's not, well, it'll work. It'll work, we'll make it happen. Um, if I can get the camera to do what I want. There we, nope. No, nope, not gonna happen. Never mind. Uh, let's get the radial attachment point again. Uh, where'd it go? Is it not here anymore? There it is. Okay, symmetry mode. Let's get that maybe like here. Okay, and let's put the. What do we want to put next? Greenhouses. Put the greenhouse. Oh, that's. 
is that a greenhouse? It said habitat. Oh, there it goes. Okay. It was just my mouse was over top of the habitat. Got it. All right. We'll put that there. And then I don't think I'll put the other one over there. Okay. Like that. Kind of like that. And then I'm going to have other things mounted to the ends of these too. But um, like I said, I'm not going to show you this whole process because it's going to take forever. But I'm just kind of showing you sort of what I'm thinking here. And then I'll then I'll keep working on it, and then I'll show you what I got. Because um, I'll probably I'm probably going to be sitting here for a couple hours. So, yeah, this stuff takes a long. <laughs> Thirty minutes of video, you guys watch. Four hours of my time. Uh, let's do laboratory, greenhouses here, habitats there. Um, do I need one more? I kind of think I need. I think I need one more. Maybe like over there. Uh, that's not level. There we go. Yep. Uh, and then we'll probably put the uh, all of the all of the mid sections, all of the connector sections that I'm not sure how I want to build them, but like I'll have them assembled, and then uh, all the mid sections will sort of be available to move around how I need them later. So uh, where is it? These these crossways is what I'm talking about. If I can ever get them to there we go these crossways and then uh, probably we'll probably hmm, yeah probably put docking ports kind of like that um, and then on the other side as well like that uh, and then I can probably just copy this and move it oh it won't let me to wow okay won't let me. Let's go ahead and. Um, no, I need it to be that way. There we go. So now these docking ports are linked up like that. And this is the back side of it. So it's like light, the, the light side. Oh, hold on, I'll show you. The light side of this is the outward part that connects to other things. You can kind of see there's like these little clamp things here and then this is the part that it gets clamped to so this is the active part of the the birthing unit and this is the passive part here um, or the passive side anyway yep and it kind of like that so I can I can kind of move these around I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this but that's sort of what I'm thinking of so I'll, I'll play around with this a little bit more um, now as far as fuel goes thinking like maybe these fuel tanks and I can just kind of put them here maybe uh, maybe symmetry uh, nope let's do let's do radial symmetry like this or cross symmetry like this I don't know what this is called uh, let's have them go right at the back here all the way you use as much space as possible on this um, and then I'll kind of duplicate that uh, come on come on now kind of like that oh I didn't go symmetry don't like me huh you don't like symmetry here we go something like that and then I'll, I'll keep that going throughout the whole the whole truss here just to give us a lot of fuel and stuff to work with probably have a couple of engines attached to these maybe don't know uh, I might do some adapter stuff and then have the big engine back in the back that uses all the fuel. Uh, I'm also going to need some RCS fuel, so I'll probably... That's too big. How about this one? Yeah, that works. So I'll probably do like something like this. So there's plenty of RCS. And then I'll come back and kind of keep this going. Something like that. You know, all the way up, the, all the way up the side. Uh, we're gonna need probably all of the, all those little racks, storage racks where we store K and K stuff, like uh, the oxygen tanks, the energy batteries, things like that. The cupola module. Probably put the cupola module actually on this side. So maybe I don't need this docking port. Maybe I'll instead just put like a. Because there was a cupola module on my habitats, I remember that. So 
if I do something like this. Yeah, that might be nice. So I'll play around with that. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I don't think there's really anything else to cover before I really get started. This is kind of what I'm thinking. I'll, I'll just kind of, uh, you know, package it all up really nice and nice and thick here, all nice and close and intimate, if you will, and then we'll have um, probably need, I need a bunch of parachutes on this because this whole thing is not gonna be able to land itself. So the, the idea here is that this is gonna go into the, uh, into the atmosphere of Duna. We'll go in backwards. Whatever engines on the back of this will burn and burn and burn until it has no fuel left. Um, then we'll just keep falling. Uh, maybe this won't burn and burn. Maybe the angle will be fine. I don't know. But we're gonna, we'll burn and burn and burn until we don't have any fuel left, most likely. Then uh, this stuff will... Uh, I'll probably launch all the parachutes that I'll have attached to this thing. And it'll be a lot. A lot of big parachutes. Um, we'll, 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 decouple the, we'll decouple each of these stages. And they'll just fall independently to the ground once the parachutes are deployed. And uh, hopefully we'll have enough parachute in that sense to have them stop and land safely without crashing and burning. That's the hope anyway. So let me play around with this. And um, I'll show you what I got after this. Okay, guys. So I'm done playing around with this. And this is what we've got. This is what I've come up with. Um, I'm thinking this is pretty much a final version of this. Uh, let me let me lower it a little bit so I can kind of move around easier. We have a whole bunch of stuff here. It's 354,000. Uh, I've went ahead and I've made the gas tanks uh, black um, instead. So because I think they look better this way, I kind of like the way that looks. Uh, we've got solar panels on the on the on the corners up here like this. So we have solar power. We've got a bunch of RCS thrusters. So we'll have some control there while we're in space. Uh, as you can see, we've got tons of parachutes. These are all radially mounted parachutes all up the side here, all down the sides here and all down this part here. These parts here, I'm a little bit worried about these crossways uh, because I'm only putting two parachutes on each one of these things. Uh, but they're not filled with anything. They're just they're just meant for like walking through, like kerbals to walk through and pass through. So they're kind of light, and I'm hoping that it's still enough. But they're not that important of parts, so maybe it won't be a big deal. Um, of course, everything is connected with docking ports and everything all over the place, so I can redock and move these around as I see fit later on, which is great. Uh, we've got the cupola module on the habitats. We've got uh, this is the laboratory. We've got these little uh, storage containers, these storage units allow me to put these sort of the modular, like I, li I really like K&K &K because it's so modular. I can just, I really can have a lot of flexibility with how my structures are. And um, it's, it, I mean, it's kind of like USI has a lot of good parts, um, which is great and all for like the purposes, but they're not, I don't believe them to be as flexible. They're not as modular. They're not as customizable as K&K. &K. And I, I kind of like, that's why I'm sort of into K&K &K a little bit more. Um, that and I've you know I've only ever used K and K, so that's kind of the reason why I'm you know, going towards that. Uh, I've got some little reaction wheels on the ends of these things uh, there, and also back here where the probe core is. This is the the probe that'll be ultimately controlling everything, and we've got the 10 meter heat shield on the front, which can inflate like that. Boom! Oh yeah, we are not burning up. Uh, this is a fairly heavy section. I'm not sure it's the heaviest part of the craft though, so I'm a little bit worried about that. But um, if we come into Duna sideways, as long as we're not coming in too fast, and we won't be, we won't be coming in very fast at all. So I'm, I'm thinking of ditching this, but for now I've got it. It's not that expensive, so I'll keep it for now. Um, we've got our laboratory greenhouses with our greenhouse containers here and here, which is pretty cool. We've got this section up here. I've decided that this side, this side here was good enough for our uh, crossways. This side over here is gonna have some crossways, but I wanted to sort of get more utility over here. So I've brought in, a lot, again, more of these storage containers or these storage modules. And I've got waste, I've got water waste, I've got the water purification, we've got the algae farms over here. I've got all sorts of like stuff that converts stuff to other stuff pretty much. And that's gonna be attached to uh, probably, probably go like a tea pattern. So like the one, one uh, 
greenhouse will be this way, one will be this way, and then at the tip will be this unit here. That's probably how I'll do it. Uh, at the end, there's an air filter. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this, guys. So this is what I've come up with. I've got it all packaged up nice and neat. And um, yeah, the staging is <laughs> pretty comical, actually. It's just nothing but, there's just nothing but parachutes here. Uh, and then at the top, there's uh, some decouplers. I, I obviously, I'm gonna have to redo the staging, but I'm not gonna bother with the staging until I've got engines and things, and um, I'll get this over to the VAB and uh, be good to go there. So let's get this over to the VAB, and then I'm going to kind of reconfigure. Uh, I'll probably mess with things just a little bit just to make sure it's, because this is gonna be one hell of a torque on this thing. I'm not even entirely sure I can fly it. But we'll do plenty of tests and plenty of adjust adjustments to make sure things are good. Uh, so let's get this over to the VAB and check out what we can do there as far as getting it into space. Okay guys, we're in the VAB and uh, yeah, we're up here really high. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty tall little vessel. Um, let's come down here. We got the same craft as you're familiar with. We come all the way down and we've got all this stuff underneath it to push it up into space. I'm not entirely sure, I've already messed with the staging, I'm not entirely sure it's going to get to space um, as far as getting it into orbit, but we're going to give it a shot just to see. So I'll give you a quick tour of the bottom section here. The part that's going to end up being sort of our descent stage or our moving around stage is, so far anyway, it's just these two nerves. Um, because it gives me, I mean it doesn't give me much, it gives me like 600 delta V, so it's not a whole lot anyway. But um, this is sort of our last ditch stage here, the, six, the 600 that's in this. Um, this is a two-way, so there's only two of these little engines. And it had to sort of kind of move these around with the, uh, the move tool here. Had to sort of squeeze them together so that this adapter would fit. And so we've got the adapter here with these two decouplers and the big engines down here. A couple of reaction wheels to help me control it while it's because it's massive and I don't even know if it's balanced. Um, we've got huge gas tanks, uh, large, large mammoth engines, or no, sorry, twin bores. Um, and then in the middle here, which is ultimately our transfer stage to Duna, um, and our insertion burn as well, is gonna be the Nova. So we're gonna be using the Nova. It's gonna be great, I think. Uh, and then we've got these solid rockets on the sides. Now the one thing I am missing, or one thing I'm not doing well, or I'm missing, our parachutes on all of this stuff so I can keep it and get the money back. This is 571,000. So a little bit more than the half a million I thought it would be, but it's, it's all right. Um, let's get uh, parachutes. And I'm just gonna throw a whole bunch of parachutes on these things now. We'll put one there, swing around, put one here. And then we're gonna put one of these shoot cones on the top. Is that enough stage recovery? It is, good. So those will get saved, good. Now we need to save these. So let's grab uh, a bunch of these. Let's put them, um, let's not worry about, yeah, let's not worry about that key. Put them like, oh, come on, like that. And then like that, and then like that. And then like that, eh, I know they're not. Two by two, that's fine. They're, they're, they're even enough, right? You guys won't mind. Two by three, whatever. Uh, let's see if that's enough. I'm not sure it is, but let's see. No, it's not, okay? So let's add some more, I guess. That's, that's the solution. When you don't have enough, you just add some more. Put some on that, we'll put one there. We'll put one over here. Uh, let's put one on the engines, actually. Let's put the ones Oh, I can't put one there. Or can I? No. Doesn't look like it'll let me. Okay. Put one there. And I guess we'll swing around and put one like maybe here. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Let's go. Let's check it now. Solid. Very cool. So that stage will all be saved, and that's the whole point. So, what do you think we give this thing a test flight, hmm? I think we should give this thing a test flight. Okay, here we are on the launch pad. Lots and lots of parts. Uh, we're gonna be launching in the dark, because again, I don't wanna waste time. Um, we're already behind our window now, so I don't wanna waste time. 
uh, not, not only by like a couple days, so it's not a huge deal. So anyway, thrusters all the way up and let's go. So far, it's pulling a little bit to the south, but other than that, it seems to be fairly okay. Oh, oh, yeah, we're kind of losing her. It is difficult to steer it. We're definitely not balanced at all. There's a lot of torque on this. If all of those engines and the gimbals they have can't help me control this, that's pretty, it's pretty bad. Oh, 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 we're good. We're losing it. We're losing it. No, no. Ah. And, yep. Ah. Nope, nothing I can do. <laughs> What's it doing? Yep. That's uh, catastrophic failure right there. Okay, well, that's why we do test flights. Um, man, that's going to be hard to hard to steer. If I can get it into the air, then we might be all right. But I got to get it into the air. Maybe I might have to go straight up longer just to get thinner. I think the... I don't know if it's an air resistance problem or if it's a weight problem. It's probably a weight problem. But let's just try it one more time. Okay, round two. Uh, no changes. Just trying to launch it again. Oh, what? What's... What? 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 Like... Okay. Well, that didn't last at all because I didn't do anything. Let's try to relaunch it again. Okay, let's try this again. I don't have any struts on this, which is probably what happened there. So, anyway, let's go. Like, nothing is strutted, because it's just not. That's, that's the reason, it's just not. Um, I probably should put struts. Oh, now we're being pulled to the north. Went too far. Okay, that takes care of those. They'll probably hit each other. That's okay, though. Just a test flight. I need to make sure I can get this to orbit. And it's really pulling. Wow. Oh, Aero Forces have taken over. I can't do anything about it. Wow. Okay, well. Hmm. Gonna have to rethink how this thing is built, guys. Okay, so basically the biggest problems I'm having with this craft is that I have a really, really kind of off center of mass, and I'm also generating a lot of torque on the vessel. And every single time I try to change something very small, I get, well, a very small result. But unfortunately, my problems are fairly large. Every time I launch this craft, my craft goes and angles itself down to the south. It wants to tip over to the south, not too far to the east where I'm actually trying to tilt it, not too far like back to the north or anything, but like to the south. That means there's too much weight on that side. The thing I didn't realize though was the parachutes were the problem. The center of mass thing is the only thing I could think of because like it's not that uneven as far as aerodynamics. We only have parachutes largely only on one side and that might be something too because I think each of these parachutes have some weight. E whoa, what? Hold on. Oh, wow. These parachutes are super heavy, guys. Look at that. Each of these parachutes is 1,492 kilograms. No freaking wonder it's pulling. Wow. What can I do to offset that? That's a lot of weight. I had no idea. Okay, I, I don't want to put the parachutes on the other side. I don't want to do that. These are expensive parachutes, right? But they have a huge, de like their deployment param, their, um, their surface area that I want, right? Um, 
deployed diameter, one, 159 meters. That's the reason why I'm choosing them. Because the other radials are 17 meters, and these ones are 30 meters. So these ones have like huge deployment di diameter. And that's what's going to really slow this stuff down. That's why I'm confident that this is not going to hit Duna's surface very fast at all. Um, and that I won't need a whole lot of fuel to slow this stuff down very much. Because once I deploy these chutes, it's like, you know, game over. Like, this stuff is stopping now. So, in order to correct the weight problem for the parachutes, the first thing I tried was to add more weight to the other side. It made sense to me to add fuel tanks because it would give us, uh, well, more fuel for the trip. And even though it's adding more weight, we would have more fuel. That was my rationality behind it. Um, so I started by adding a bunch of fuel, but that doesn't work either. So then I'm like, well, maybe it's about the balance, the specific parts where the, uh, the parachutes are. Maybe it's just the fact that I just have too many of these things and I'm realizing that I kind of do and the fact that these things are super expensive and super heavy I'm pretty sure I can get the torque more under control if I just sort of be a little bit more conservative with my parachutes so I start taking a bunch of them out start moving them around and I realize now by looking at Kerbal Engineer that my torque is now fairly manageable but there is a little bit of a problem still so how about a little tank so I start adding a little tank well that didn't work either so now I'm thinking okay it's not weight anymore my center of mass is too low. I need to raise it up. So I t sort of tried to reconfigure how my top section is by adding more weight up here. I get rid of the heat shield. We're not going to bring that now. And I start to add more fuel tanks. I start by essentially just having a tiny one, but obviously I need to add a lot more weight to the top if I'm going to offset the center of mass. So I start to add, I, 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 admittedly, I'm kind of ridiculous here thinking that this is going to do anything. So this little tank, nah, not going to happen. Let's add a bigger version of this thing. So I have like a warhead looking thing on the top of the craft. And well, that's not going to work either, I'm afraid. Now, you guys aren't seeing this, but uh, I, I've cut this extremely fast. This is like thousands of percent here. And on top of that, I'm sort of hiding all of the different launches. I've done about 10 different test flights during the course of this, and I'm just sort of cutting around them. What I ended up doing is adding two big tanks to the top and they're all going to be fuel that we're going to use but once we're out of the atmosphere and we no longer have to deal with the extreme aero forces anymore then i can get rid of these tanks and, and get them off so i don't have to deal with the dead weight that solution actually seems to have a pretty positive effect on the flight i'm able to control the craft much better i'm able to uh you know maneuver it how i want and it's no longer drifting to the south i can actually kind of do a whole gravity turn if i want to Unfortunately, I made another critical error with this test flight as well, since the fuel in the top tanks are not accessible by the engines. I didn't add any fuel lines. Okay, we're back here. Now, all this stuff is cross-feed and all that stuff is nice and all, but we have to be able to get the fuel into these tanks. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two, um, well, I'm going to add more than two fuel lines, but I need to add a fuel line from here this is kind of weird but we're going to do it from here and that's actually kind of like that but i'd like it to be symmetrical so from this tank here down to here that's fine so that should allow fuel to travel down from there to there but it's only going to go into these two tanks. So to help with the distribution and making it even, I'm also going to put fuel lines from here to here. And now we can have fuel going all over the place, pumping it down into these engines. And hopefully that's helpful. Now, I'm going to make sure that this fuel is unavailable for the launch and then from there I think we're good to, to go ahead and uh, to get it started let's make sure the staging is right I don't want to have to move that stage again so let's do that let's, let's do that uh, it's been a long day already guys here's this this uh, unclamp here 
Then we fire this engine. Um, is it that engine? Yeah, that's that engine. Fire. All of these get unclamped. Then we're going to fire this engine. Yep. And then these get unclamped. No, this is right. Wait a minute. No, this is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the, oh, what, was it? what was I thinking? Yeah, yeah. This goes like this. And then this unclamps. Okay, that's fine. And then um, that's it. That's it, guys. That's all we need. Uh, let's add a couple of struts just to make sure that things are really nice and sturdy. Let's do medium struts. And we're going to go just kind of from uh, the top of here to here. And then uh, that's probably good. Fuel lines are kind of janky, but whatever. It's cool. Are we ready to launch this thing for real now, guys? Can we do that? <laughs> is it possible to do that? Uh, is there anything we can put up here? I don't know. Is there anything useful we can put up here? I could probably move this antenna since I don't have anything on top anymore. I probably don't have to nestle the antenna anymore. So if I just set it on the very top, it makes it easily accessible, you know? Do I need any more batteries? No, I have plenty of power on these little batteries here and everything. So. Uh, I think we're ready. I think we're ready to launch. I think we did it. Got this thing as freaky as it looks. We got the thing to work. So, uh, yeah, save the changes and it's time to launch for real, but we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do that in the next episode. See you for the next one, guys. Bye.